BNB Shockers Revealed Sheila's Return Rocks Steffi's World Finn's Biological Mom Threatens to Kill Don't Miss the Drama Unfolding Sheila's Unexpected Encounter with Kelly Sparks Chaos Steffi Furious as Mother-in-Law Returns Finn Caught in the Middle Plus, Eric's Proposal Shocks Everyone Wedding Party Drama Unfolds Who Was Left Out? Liam and Bill's Complicated Relationship Unveiled Click now for the jaw-dropping details Spoilers for The Bold and the Beautiful, Sheila and Kelly's Encounter in Rage's Steffi Playdate results in mother-in-law threatening to kill spoilers for the bold and the beautiful indicate that Sheila Carter will receive a welcome surprise when a familiar face appears at I.L. Giardino. There will be problems because of an unexpected encounter, so let's discuss what to expect. Fans of BNB are aware that Sheila has been told to avoid contact with John Finn Finnegan's family, nonetheless, Kelly Spencer will be Sheila's new client and bring about a reunion. Kelly will be allowed to go on a playdate with Danny by Steffi Forrester, and Lucy, his mother, will drive Kelly and Danny to the restaurant where Sheila works. Sheila will naturally be drawn to Kelly immediately. It goes without saying that Kelly will remember the day Sheila saved her life on the beach and that Sheila is also Finn's biological mother. It appears that Lucy will speak with Steffi on the phone to provide updates regarding Sheila's whereabouts. When Steffi finds out that Kelly has been hanging out with Sheila, she won't be happy, especially since this might rekindle Sheila's fascination with Finn's family and cause further turmoil. Finn will comfort Steffi and maybe even act as though it was a one-time event that won't happen again. Perhaps Finn will insist that Kelly be kept away from Sheila and I.L. Giardino going forward. Steffi will still likely be anxious about the circumstance, though, and it appears that Liam Spencer will exacerbate her worries even more after learning the truth. Steffi will occasionally appear very suspicious as she stands by the back door and peers out of the far distance. Steffi might be concerned about Sheila returning to the cliff house due of a noise. Sheila may be triggered by Steffi's negative feelings about this contact between Sheila and Kelly, reminding her of how much she wants to be a member of Finn's small family. Steffi might fight back just as hard if Sheila puts more effort into making it happen, which might result in some more intense face-offs. Take note of all the exciting news that lies ahead, Shalia and Steffi's feud is far from ended, according to spoilers for The Bold and the Beautiful. Today's next news. We are pleading with bold and beautiful not to go in the direction that we all know they are. This week, a party that turned into a wedding marked the beginning of the February sweeps on bold and beautiful. In the meantime, we embarked on a new narrative arc that will probably enrage a lot of people for a variety of reasons should it go forward next week. I'll just say it, Eric is a terrible party host. I mean, buddy, maybe if you put a little effort into organizing the events, attendees may be given some notice and make it. Not for nothing, although the Forrester living room isn't exactly screaming, special occasion, despite its good qualities. But it does scream wedding. The fact that Carter, the family's unofficial officiant, was on the somewhat select guest list and Donna's white outfit also made an impression. There were more Logans than Foresters in attendance, as several people noted. Additionally, I had to wash my hair was one of the most common justifications offered for some of the absences. It made sense since Hayes was ill and Steffi didn't want to jeopardize her grandfather's health, who was still recuperating. But is there a significant hope for the future meeting between Thomas and Hope? Yes, indeed. Perhaps someone should have given Bridget a call, she assisted Finn in saving Eric's life. The man who got married. Eric's proposal was flawless in every way, possibly even more so than many people realized. 
First, Eric asked Ridge to assist him in lowering himself to his knees. This effectively demonstrated that Eric still has a long way to go and is not quite recovered. Next was the expression on John McCook's face when he asked, Will you marry your honey bear? Speaking with McCook a few weeks ago, he expressed that he and Jennifer Garice were happy that the show moved this couple away from their time as honey bear. Indeed, given the way this show is written, it will always be a part of their history and one of the lines we feature in our soap opera drinking game forever. However, McCook's expression was a very good way of admitting that Donna and Eric have evolved into much more than just the bimbo mistress and the horny old goat. The Invited Shouldn't Thomas be irritated that Zend wasn't invited to the Hope for the Future meeting if it was so crucial that he had to skip his grandfather's wedding? Ultimately, he is purportedly extensively involved in that line. Isn't he supposed to be just as angry about being left out of that as he is about not contributing to the creation of Eric's line, which he was never a part of in the first place? Of course, though, Zend had to attend this party in order for him and R.J to set aside their disagreements and take this story in a completely other route. When Poppy noticed that her special mints had vanished, Luna was chugging them down with champagne, and Zend kept saying that he would be more than willing to take over if she ever got bored with her partner. The next thing we knew, a stoned Luna was pointing to Zend's bed in the guest house, thinking he was our dot J. Nothing would please me more than to think that Zend will understand what's happening and go. However, this program enjoys nothing more than retelling its own past, and we've seen nearly the same situation arise over. Let's just presume that next week will bring up a ton of topics for discussion. Say no to the D a word. The scenes with Liam and Bill made me laugh, especially when the son said that his father wasn't a destiny fate kinda guy, even though he's been babbling on and on about how the world has been bringing Poppy back into his life for a purpose. Actually, Liam spoke those exact words right after that. And shortly after that, Bill was discussing the cosmic forces with Poppy in order to get them back together. Liam continued by stating that he had never witnessed his father being so enamored with a lady. Apologies, Katie. It seems that Bill's years of longing for you were nothing in comparison to the two or three dates he's had in recent weeks with Poppy. Bill's statement that he had felt the same way about Liam's mother was the cherry on top. We've always been told that Bill was a love em and leave em kind of person, but it turns out that he was genuinely in love with every woman he met and never bothered to stay in touch with them. What comes next? Even while we already know that their connection was mostly driven by mutual hatred and was extremely sexual, are they going to claim that he was also in love with Wyatt's mother? This is such an obvious rewriting of Bill's past that it's nearly as horrible as when Nina from General Hospital turned into a fairly stable part of Port Charles society and became best friends with the same woman, despite having once actually torn a child out of another woman's womb. We are aware, unlike the writers, that Bill was always a playboy who experienced love for the first time when he met the lovely Katie Logan. The central theme of their narrative was his constant failure to alter his behavior for her. Not only are we wiping out that long past now, but we're also acting as though Bill has fallen in love with every woman he's had a one-night stand with. Unexpected ideas What was the reason behind Poppy and Luna's elaborate preparations in the Forrester design office? Wouldn't that have been possible at home? To reduce the amount of time spent on the set, they could have Luna claim that our dot J had handed her the key to the beach house. In relation to sets, I regret Poppy's situation. They only traveled to I.L. Giardino, even though she is seeing one of the wealthiest men in the community. Yes, the pizza is well rated on Yelp, but the restaurant also employs the lady who attempted to kill Lee, Steffi, and Finn. A wealthy family like the Foresters ought surely have a fleet of vehicles to transport their celebratory guests home, wouldn't they? 
When Eric said to Ridge, when my time comes, and it will, I'm not afraid, I started to cry. Please understand that I don't want you to feel worried for me. Without a doubt, I adore this life. My goal is to survive. And what a sweet moment it was when Eric kissed his son's cheek after finishing his speech. It was an almost ideal moment. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.